So how do we get there? Uh, th this is based on some research by Dolly Gossett, but basically here's your sizing procedure. Determine the required flow rate to offset the heat loss, just like any other system you're working with. What is the BTU heat loss? How much do we need GPNYs to offset it? What delta T you want to decide to? What size is your recirculation return line? Is it going to be three quarter inch, one inch? We've got to know that return line so we can get the friction hit. Go to your and gossip system size or some friction chart. Come up with your head loss for the pump. Then select your pump based on flow and head. I repeat, very small pumps as you will see very shortly. So let's take a typical apartment example which is going to be uh, very similar to what you see a lot. And let's go through this and show you the procedure. I'm not going to drill through every number. I just want you to understand the procedure. Once you got the procedure down, you begin to see why it's so small, and you know when and where to take a look. Then there's some shortcuts you can take based on the pipe length and the pipe size, and we'll give you a chart for that. By the way, Bell & Gossett has a TEH manual on domestic hot water research. If anybody that is tunes in on this little uh, uh, presentation, wants one, send us an email or go on the JMP website, contact us and send us a note. We'll be happy, free of charge, to send you a copy of the research name. Uh, basically, here we go with a typical fixture unit count for sizing pipe and coming up with demand and flow in GPM, which again, we're not going to spend an awful lot of time on, except for you to note the bottom statement there. We're going to have trail risers. They're going to be 25 feet apart a total supply pipe length of 300 feet. Total supply pipe, domestic hot water supply pipe in the building is going to be 300 feet long. So here's a little snapshot, a little picture of this apartment with one water heater shown in blue and the green is the supply pipe for the domestic hot water. And remember each one of those takeoffs is 25 feet apart. So now we got some total flow rate in GPM that we're going to go to the fixture unit charts and we're going to come up with the GPM to size the pipe. So we've already sized the pipe for you. It's two and a half inch in the first section and you see each section it goes down a little bit all the way down to the very end where it's an inch and a quarter. Then we tie in a little red piece of pipe is the hot water research line that we're going to draw water through back to the water heater to offset the heat loss in that supply piece of pipe at 300 feet. And in our example, we're going to hold it to 10 degrees delta T. So we're going to come up with uh, the heat loss in BTUs per hour, and we're going to come up with the GPM required to hold that to a 10 degree drop. That's all we're trying to do, to keep that hot water hot. Because out at the very end, at riser number 12, if you go to take a shower, we want hot water sitting there for you, even at 2 a.m. at night, ready to go, so you don't waste a lot of water. So as you start thinking about wasting this water thing a little bit, think about the fixtures, think about the runouts from the main to the fixture. How long should that runout be on riser number 12 from where we research it, where the green is, to where your shower head is? Is that going to be 10 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet? How long should we allow that to be? We'll keep talking about it as we go. So first thing let's do, let's talk about the heat load. So we want the heat loss in a supply piece of pipe. It's a, it's a little formula you guys are all familiar with. Q is equal to GPM times 500 times delta T. First question is, what is it a good design delta T? I'm going to use 10. 20 would probably work. 5 is OK, but I'm going to use 10 degrees, and I think that's very reasonable. A lot of designers use 10, but there's nothing cast in stone about that. So let's go to a little example and see what we got. So this is that very last riser out there, and I want to make sure you don't lose track of what we're doing here. If you look at point A, the research part is the green part of the pipe. That's where we're going to recircle water through. We're going to keep that hot. We're going to make sure that's within 10 degrees of the design supply hot water temperature as a minimum. But from point A out to point E, you've got to run out to the, to the fixture, to the shower, to the lake, to the sink, to the dishwasher, whatever it is. And we've got to run out there. And that's going to be full of cold water when you first open your faucet up. So how long is it going to take you to get cold water? And how much of that water is going down the drain? That's the issue. So codes will define for you how long to make A to E without recirc. Another thing you could do between A and E is wrap it in a heat tracing tape to keep it hot all the time. 
but there are codes that says to you how close to the fixture you have to recirc the water to keep it warm. There are codes that say to you the runout from E to A is limited so many feet. The old code in 2010 in most states out of ICC, our International Plumbing Code, used 100 feet. Um, Bell and Gossett is recommending at least nothing over 50 feet. And the new code, 2012 version of IPC in some states have also adopted the 50 feet. So I think a reasonable design today would probably be 50 feet run out between A and E max. Remembering you're going to waste all that water down the drain. However, some states are shortening that 50 feet up. Some, some states are making you heat wrap, heat wrap the tape. The longer that piece of pipe, the more water you're going to waste. And I'm going to show you shortly the low flow fixtures make this more complicated. But get in your mind, the purpose of all of this is between A and E, you go to take a shower, you're dumping water down the drain, and you're wasting water. And how long that piece of pipe is determines how much water you're going to waste, even with the hot water recirculation. So let's look a little bit at what we got on hot water circulation and what they're recommending to you. This is the old IBC, ICC code that most states are still on. And the point of this one is it did say 100 feet between the point of recirculation and the fixture. The 2012 code is people, is some states adopt that. Remember, states are slow getting there, show 50 feet. Your local plumbing code may show a different number. So you need to check your local plumbing code and go for good design. Good design might be 50 feet, but you need to verify that for your firm. I hope you understand the point. So low flow fixture units. Uh, this so-called energy uh, green design guide from ASHRAE, and you see USGBC stamps on the front of it, is encouraging you to go to lower low flow rate units. Look at this public uh, self -clo metering self closing faucet, public metering self closing faucet, kind of there in the middle, 0.25 gallons per metering cycle. These are these faucets that you go into a bathroom like at a big airport and you put your hands underneath them and it hits a little photo cell and it cuts on and it gives you a quarter of a gallon of water. <laughs> Recently I came in from a flight from overseas to a major airport in the country. It was early in the morning, 6 a.m. and I guess I must have been the very first person in this bathroom recently because it took me 20 times with my hands back and forth cycling to get hot water to where I could wash my face with hot water. Now I wanted hot water. I want to wash my hands and face with hot water. 20 cycles to get it. What's the message? The message is these low flow fixtures are indeed low flow. So if you got that run out of 50 feet, maybe too long on some of these things if you are not willing to wait for a while to get hot water. Simple little comment, but these codes are going to going to begin to come into play very quickly, and you need to be aware that you might get that kind of complaint of how long it takes to get hot water with these public meetings, set closed and faucets if you don't pay attention to the link from the domestic hot water research point to the fixture. You've got to begin to get common sense in this. So here's a little quick example of what I just told you. If you had a 0.25 gallon per meeting cycle faucet to work with, Will you ever get hot water? This goes back to my little experience in the airport. If you do a routine calculation on that, you come up with about 0.35 feet per second flow in a half inch copper pipe, about 0.35 feet per second on a quarter of a gallon per metering cycle. Common problem is because this is very low flow, very low flow, and you're cutting it on and off. So if you've got shorter runs, uh, say less than 50 feet would be nice. But if you don't have, if, if you are at 50 feet and you've got electric heat tracing and runouts, fine. But if you don't, you're going to be waiting a long time for water. In other words, at 0.35 feet per second, divide that into 50 feet. How long is it going to take you to get water? Divide the 0.35 into 50. What do you come up with? A couple minutes. Think about that. A couple minutes. And that's kind of where we headed. We do have a product called AutoCirc. It's a pretty good solution to that. We'll show you a couple snapshots. And it's something you might want to think about. Uh, here is a slide that may catch you off guard. Uh, ASHRAE has a new standard committee they're working on. It's not passed yet, and it's not out for publication yet, but it's been in public review a couple of times. And they're trying to save water. 
And interesting thing is you will find that ASHRAE, ASPE, AWWA, and USGBC are all involved in this. This is the new standard 191P that the Board of Directors has not passed, but it's coming. I wish there was some of you young kids in the audience. It's going to be a huge, huge potential for plumbing coming forward in the future. It's going to be some big changes. If you got AWWA and all these people agreeing on a standard, you know it's not going to take long for it to become building code. And this is how to save hot water, how to save cold water, how to conserve water. The one little thing on hot water distribution I want you to see is, look, look at what's in red down there, that from the point of hot water recirculation or heat tracing tape, your choice, to the fixture, you cannot waste over 16 ounces of water when you turn it on. Think about that. Think about what I'm telling you. You can't waste over 16 ounces of water from a, from you go in to take your shower. That's all the water going to let you go down the drain to meet this code. Oh man, that's going to be huge change. It's going to be you can't run 50 feet anymore, guys, and you're going to have to have heat tracing tape, or you're going to have to recircuit right up to the fixture. That's the message I want you to understand. The world is changing. Be aware. Here's the uh, little draft of some of this stuff. And the message to you should be the chairperson of this standard committee that has not passed yet. It's not passed, but it will be. It's going to come. It is an ASHRAE member. Vice chair is AWWA member. Another vice chair is ASPE. Another vice chair is USGBC. My point being is if those people agree on something, look out. It's going to happen. Here's another standard committee that I think you should be aware of. This leads to another thing. Um, yes, ASHRAE has a standard committee coming on Legionella has not passed the board of directors yet, but they're so serious about this, they've recently taken uh, Tom Watson, who was last year's society president, and made him chair of this committee. It's that important to get it out and get it done. There are some issues we'll let you know. Number, number one issue I told you about a little while back, this might be a little good news for you, they recognize that the energy code 90.1 telling you to circulate on and off, <laughs> and OSHA telling you to run it continuously is a problem. So what they're trying to do is work through those, those conflicts that we've got, but at the same time um, take care of the Legionella problem, which in essence is going to mean we're going to have to somewhere in this flow loop heat the water to 140 and kill this Legionella. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be a lot more complicated than that, but that's where we're headed. I wish I was a young kid working in the plumbing business. I'll give you kids a prediction. Five to ten years, every commercial building we deal with is going to have two plumbing systems in every commercial building. One is going to be reclaim, gray water, recycle water, rainwater, recollection. The other system is going to be potable water. So we're going to have two plumbing systems, one for potable drinking water and one for reclaim, recycling water, flush water, whatever you want to use it. We're going to break it down. Every system. It's just the beginning. And we're going to have low flow fixtures. Just think of what's coming. You guys need to be all over this because it's the future. Whether you like it or not, we're going to have to save water. Well, that out of the way, so you understand how important this is. I hope you kind of get the message you need to learn all this. Let's look at a simple recirculation system. And this is the one we looked at a little while ago where we got 300 feet of pipe. Let's take a quick look at it. Now, here's a little chart B and G put together. And you can do the math, but basically, if you got a 10 degree drop, then at 10 degree drop, one GPM will allow you to get 5,000 BTUs. If you had a 20 degree drop, one GPM would allow you to get 10,000 BTUs. In other words, if my heat loss on a piece of pipe was 10,000 BTUs, I could flow one GPM through it at a 20 degree delta T. If my heat loss was 10,000, BTUs, I could put two GPM through it with a 10 degree drop. So the message is this is a way, but quickly in a table way of calculating the GPM required to offset that heat loss in my supply pipe. Good. Then you send a little chart BGs prepared, and we really shouldn't pay any attention to the non insulated pipe. You can if you want to, but the first column is insulated copper tube or steel pipe. And notice at four inch. Four inch piece of pipe, huge piece of pipe, supply pipe. It's only 5,000 BTUs per 100 feet. 
and you see from the previous chart how low a flow flow rate that would be. And a four inch supply pipe, ladies and gentlemen, is huge. It's a huge piece of pipe. So you're beginning to see this heat loss when you got insulated supply pipe for domestic hot water. It's not a real big number. And that's the message we want to give to you. Now we don't have the time today to sit through and take off every piece of pipe in that 300 feet of pipe I just showed you. But B and G has done that, has taken it off by pipe size, by the length of pipe, and calculated the supply pipe heat loss. And it's 9,320 BTUs. In other words, between the water heater B all the way out to riser number 12, all that green pipe, we got a supply heat loss of 9,320 BTUs that we need to offset to keep that water hot so we don't waste it when you turn on a shower at riser number 12. So that's not a, and that's a, you know, two and a half inch pipe is what we started off with. That's a pretty decent sized system. So if you decided we were going to start at 140, and that's probably hot, and you were going to hold 130 at the end of the green piece of pipe, that would be 10 degree drop. It, would, it takes one GPM per 5,000 BTUs, one GPM per 5,000. I only need 1.87 GPM to offset those BTUs. So my pump, believe it or not, is less than two GPM. So we told you this is some very small numbers. Now, if I go to a three-quarter inch copper line on the red piece of pipe, the hot water return, then the friction at two GPM through that three-quarter inch piece of pipe is 1.4 feet per 100 feet of pipe from a spell and gossip system size. So I add all that together and quickly putting a check valve, a supply pipe we don't need to worry about because it's huge, only flowing 2 GPM, not worried about the water heated with 2 GPM. My total friction loss for my pump is 5.2 feet. Make a long story short, you've got to go pick a pump for 2 GPM at 5 feet ahead after all those calculations. So that's just why 90% of the time we don't do this. It takes time. So, by the way, we base this on 140 degree supply heat in the supply piece of pipe with an ambient temperature of 70. If you have colder ambient or colder supply water, this is a little form that you'd offset it. In this particular case, we've dropped it to 120. As you can see, the BTU heat loss is much, much less. So the message is this is conservative at the 140 little chart we showed you. So let's go back to our example. 300 feet, of, 300 feet of supply pipe. I want to make sure it drops, it starts at 140 at the B, and at fixture 12, I'm at 130. And again, I repeat, it would probably be more like 120 to 110, or maybe 115 to 105 would probably be your actual numbers. But we're looking at 10 degree delta T is what we're looking at. It takes 2 GPM to do that at a 10 degree delta T. Now, here's another little chart that B&G put together. And this is insulated pipe at the top. But don't worry about the bottom. The red's insulated piece of pipe. And on the right-hand side are two very common B&G pumps, a little NBF 25 or the old Series 100 all bronze that some people still love. But the little NBF is the wet rotor bronze pump that does the same thing as the 100 does. But what, what's, what you need to get out of this is if I had an inch and a half uh, pipe and it was 800 to 1,200 feet long and it was insulated, I got an NBF 25. Listen to me now. Listen to me. If I got a half inch research line and my pipe, my supply pipe's 200 feet long, I got an NBF 25. So what you guys have done is you put NBF 25s on everything, which is fine, and it works 90% of the time. That's a pretty big changes in pipe supply. So what you have learned over the years is 90% of the time this research thing is not an issue. Let's just throw an NBF 25 on there. We'll be fine, and that's normally true. So when is it not true is a reason for this seminar. 